Welcome to Affinity Designer. I wanted to definitely review this tool as a great alternative to the Adobe Illustrator tool. And Affinity Designer also has Affinity Publisher and a couple other tools that can replace Adobe products if you feel like the Adobe subscription products are just going to cost too much to stay updated. The great thing about the Affinity software is it's a one-time purchase. Once you purchase the software, you own it. You don't have to pay a monthly subscription rate, which can really be beneficial for those trying to keep costs down, but using a software that's very, very comparable to the Adobe products we use in this class. So do I think this tool is better than Adobe Illustrator? I wouldn't say it's better. I'd say it's definitely different. And there's some ways that Affinity Designer is very innovative in the way they design their UI interface and some of their tools. And they're a lot more intuitive than Adobe Illustrator in some areas. Uh, they do lack the full suite of tools that Adobe Illustrator has, but you could do probably 95% of what Adobe Illustrator does and what I do in the class in Affinity Designer, maybe even 99.9%. .9%. Are there other alternative tools that Affinity Designer has that are, comes really close to what you can do in Adobe Illustrator? So you'll notice how I move throughout the software. It's very, very similar to Adobe Illustrator. I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new document. You're going to see a lot of familiar settings. So you're going to be able to open up a pixels or inches. You could do a web or a print just like you would in Adobe Illustrator. Um, it lets you have bleed and margins and all that fun stuff. So we're just going to open up a standard artboard at just a 1280 by 800 um, size. So we have a new document here. Uh, I'm going to kind of go over the infrastructure a little bit first and the dashboard really quickly. Just like uh, Adobe Illustrator, you have your toolbar to the left. I can actually double click here to isolate the toolbar so I can shift it around wherever I want and I can double click on the gray area and it's going to go ahead and pop on back. And so you'll see there's a little bit less tools here, but I think they're more extensive and a little bit uh, have a little bit more options than Adobe Illustrator in some cases. For example, their shape tools, uh, instead of having to click and hold and, and get a wide variety of tools, you have them all right here accessible on your toolbar. So I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool and get a hold down shift to do something dimensionally, which is the same thing you do in Adobe Illustrator. If you don't hold down shift, it'll kind of scale it however you'd like. I'm going to hold down shift and scale to dimensionally to make a shape. And now you're going, well, now what? How is it a little bit different? You go up here to your panels, which you can drag these out just like Adobe Illustrator. There's nothing different in that, in that regard. And I'm over here in the color panel. And you'll notice right here instantly this, this looks a lot different. And I think it's a much better way to display your color picking abilities here. So I can kind of bring this all the way around the color wheel. I can add more tint and shade to it just by dragging it to the different corners of the triangle. And I find this a much more intuitive way to, to pick colors. So that's just like that, you pick colors. And you'll notice down here, you don't have your fill or swatch panel on the lower left-hand side. To be able to do a fill and a stroke, you have them right here in this area, and you can toggle them back and forth between stroke and fill. So let's say I wanna add a stroke to the circle. We double click the stroke area and kind of change the color. Maybe we want to make it a lighter purple color and you can always kind of change that shade right here. So it's not really thick. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. It's not thick at all. So how do I change the stroke thickness? There is a stroke panel just like Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to drag out that stroke panel like I do throughout the class on, on my Adobe Illustrator stuff and go ahead and change the width. So you can kind of have this live preview at the width changes, which is really, really nice. And I'm going to go ahead and do a square really quickly so I can show you how it treats corners. So I'm holding down shift, dragging, and it's going to, and you notice how it automatically adapts what I just did. I don't have to sit there and use the eyedropper tool and, and, and get that style. It automatically remembers what my last styling was in terms of the color. So that's kind of a nice feature of a little bit different feature. So right here, this is kind of similar to Adobe Illustrator. They have different titles for these different caps and round round cap. That's actually a similar title in Adobe Illustrator. You can toggle these on and do square caps for your corners. Um, you can have different corner shapes. So you can flip that around. Um, different alignment. So if you want it to align to the outside or to the inside, you can. And of course, you can change your stroke width. So your stroke panel is very, very similar to Adobe Illustrator. And what's also similar is your effects kind of area. If you go down here, there's an effects panel. And this is by default right down here. So I'm in the effects panel and this is where you can add, you know, Gaussian blur, outer shadow. This is where you get to 
have your drop shadow. It's not titled drop shadow and we'll run into a lot of instances where uh, Affinity and Adobe Illustrator are very, very close, but they have some differences in names and I'm sure that's for legal reasons. So instead of drop shadow, um, it's called an outer shadow. So we're going to click on outer shadow. It's going to allow, let me go, go ahead and drag this out. So I'm going to add radius to my drop shadow and make it have more of a distance, have a little bit more of an offset and you can of course change your change your transparency, make it really strong or make it really light. So this is just in your effects panel where you can add that drop shadow. You can add a lot of different bevel effects just like you would in a layer panel in Photoshop. So I'm going to drag this back over to our panels. You can see already how, how easy it was for me as an Adobe Illustrator user to transition to Affinity Designer. It only took me about an hour experimenting with the tools to really feel like I am very comfortable here. Um, so that's what's great if you take some of the Adobe Illustrator lessons, you can apply them if you happen to be an Affinity Designer user. One of the areas where Affinity Designer really shines above Adobe Illustrator is its default shapes tools. So you have your typical tools that you also, or your shape tools that you also see in Adobe Illustrator, but you have so many more options here that are built in by default that you don't have to create on your own. You can adapt these to create all sorts of kind of logo design symbols and icons really, really easily. So I'm gonna start with a star tool. I'm just gonna hold down shift and drag so I can get a simple star. And right now I have my stroke on, so I'm just gonna go up here to color and toggle that to fill, just like you would in Adobe Illustrator. And what I love about this is you double click the shape and it gives you a little ways to kind of manipulate the shape further. So it doesn't give you a standard star and leave you at that. It gives you a little bit of chance to manipulate this even further so you can bring it in or bring it out. And you can do that over here as well where you can expand it out and expand it in. So let's say I want to add rounded corners to this. Uh, they have a different way to do rounded corners in Affinity Designer. You're going to go up to Corner Tool, which is this tool right here in the toolbar. You're going to go ahead and click that. And you can click on any of these corners and make particular ones rounded. Go ahead and select all the corners. And then I can change all of the shapes to rounded and create a whole combination of different shapes. So I want to explore the pie tool. So I think this is a really neat tool as well with the donut tool. So I'm going to select the pie tool right down here in the toolbar. Hold down shift, go ahead and create the shape. So you'll see these little orange nodes. They call them nodes in Affinity Designer, these little anchor points. And so you'll hear the terminology anchor points in Adobe Illustrator, but all it is is an anchor point is a node. It's just a different terminology that Affinity Designer uses for anchor points. So you have these different colored orange nodes, and it's gonna give you an ability to customize these shapes even further. If you grab the second orange node, you can click and drag and be able to change the shape just like this. I think this is really powerful. You don't have these built-in tools in Adobe Illustrator. It's not quite as intuitive. You have to use the Shape Builder tool and a bunch of other tools to make a shape. But look how quickly I was able to make this shape and be able to customize it. So we can do a double star tool. So we're going to hold down, double star. It's going to give you those orange nodes that you can manipulate further. Bring it out or bring it in. You can round the corners as well by using uh, that corner tool. You can select all the corners and round everything out to create some pretty quick shapes. So they got some really neat default stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and do a cog. And remember those orange nodes are how you can manipulate it further. So kind of explore how you can make that cog bigger. You can make a sunburst out of it. You can kind of widen and fatten the different cog wheels. And you can even bring it out so you can see how I can make a gear and all sorts of things super, super quick. I'm gonna go ahead and get that corner round tool, select everything, round those corners ever so slightly. You can create cogs, you can do all sorts of things. This is where it really shines. Um, Affinity Designer over Adobe Illustrator. I find these shapes tools so powerful in creating those default shapes that I wanna create with the iconog iconography or logo design or certain icons I wanna use on a flyer or poster. I find this a lot more intuitive and quicker to create a wide variety of unique shapes um, over Adobe Illustrator.